All right, so I've been predicting that Mexico and Canada are going to be quick. I'm talking, they're going to blank with President-elect Donald Trump and renegotiate in NAFTA. But it's going to be a whole different story when we're talking about China. And the big question is, can we avoid a big-scale trade war? Joining me to discuss is Jim Rickards, one of my favorites when it comes to the economy. Jim, uh, President-elect Trump has already spoken with uh, Xi Jinping. Um, they're making nice so far, but there are some saber-rattling in China itself. Right. And talk of the damage that a trade war would uh, would have on American companies and American consumers. Right. So Trump has talked about 45 percent tariffs on Chinese imports. China said, "You do that, and no more orders for Boeing. We'll buy Airbus. Forget your iPhones, you know, etc." Sounds like a negotiation, Charles. Both sides are, are tough negotiators. These are opening bids. I've never understood Trump's uh, tariff policy as being where he wanted to end up. It's just where he starts the negotiation. This is the art of the deal. Uh, the problem with the trade war between the U.S. and China, both sides will lose. Now, China will lose more because they have an illegitimate communist regime. We at least have a legitimate regime. But we'll both lose. And so nobody really wants that. But, but I don't view this as threats. I view these as opening bids in a, okay. in a negotiation. Opening salvos by both parties. Exactly. Why not? It's the, way, uh, the U.S. has always kind of rolled over and played dead with China. But Trump wants to, you know, right. Well, a better You get deal. that. I get that. I'm not so sure that all the, the, uh, the, 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 the people who voted get that. And they may be expecting a lot. That might not be achievable. Uh, and we do have, we, we're 5% of the world's population. We make products that the rest of the world wants, e even someone, even a lot of consumers in China. So, so what's the route, if you had Donald Trump here, that you would take? And ultimately, what do you think would be acceptable? Well, he starts out with his 45%, right? But then he says, hey, China, what, what have you got for us? You, know, you want to go a little easy on stealing intellectual property, uh, open up the, your capital account, let more U.S. investment come in, allow uh, more U.S. control of Chinese corporations, you know, open up your market a little bit. Well, now it's 30%. Now, what else have you got for me? It's just, the, to me, it's a give and take. What would China want? Uh, well, China wants to keep things the way they are. I mean, they, they have an illegitimate regime. They've got to keep these jobs going. They have a lot of problems as it is, Charles, as you know. They've got a huge problem. 240 percent debt to GDP ratio when, when you count consumer, sure. corporate and government debt. A lot of dollar denominated debt. Massive capital flight coming out of China. Their capital, their uh, surplus is going from $4 trillion to $3 trillion. And in, by the way, though, we should let the half. audience know, half of that $500 billion was spent trying to keep their currency up. Sure. Which, I mean, yeah. We hear about China being currency manipulators and artificially suppressing their currency. They did that for years as they built their wealth, but more recently they've been spending a lot of money trying to keep it up. Right. Well, no, lately it's been going down, but you're right. Most of it, 2015, they were propping it up. That was to play nice with the IMF so they could get into the special drawing right. Okay. That's this IMF world money. They got uh, more voting rights to the IMF, thanks to Paul Ryan. He slipped something in last year. So China's been getting a lot from the IMF, so they had to play nice with the international system. But lately, the currency's been going down. By the way, there's no greater currency manipulator than the U.S. All the major countries manipulate. We all manipulate currency. Absolutely. Absolutely. How would Donald Trump then, let's say there's an impasse, right, and they can't, uh, they get to the 30 percent number or whatever. Yeah. We want more. We want the American voter to see something in their backyard. We want to bring back a few of these jobs. How does he force their hand? I mean, I heard the, some folks in the administration talk about us forcing them via currency. Well, the way you do it, you don't put pressure on China, put pressure on the companies. And Trump has talked about that. You know, if you want to move jobs abroad, don't expect to bring your good. You can have selective tariffs. It uh, doesn't have to be across the board. He's spoken about that. But you could target particular sectors and say, hey, put more jobs in the United States. So there are, there are smart ways to do it. So would you do that to Apple? I, I mean, uh, I, I read where the average worker in Foxconn makes like uh, $4,500 a year. I would do it to How do you turn a $4,500 a year job into a $50,000 a year job? Well, I would do it to any company where you could create jobs in the United States. And there, there are a lot of other factors uh, besides just the wages. I mean, you've got, um, you know, starting with import duties, but also transportation costs, energy costs. We've got some cheap energy in this country. We've got water. China's a desert. There are a lot of advantages. Uh, corporations, when they make these decisions, it's not just the wages. That's certainly part of it. But there are a lot of other things you could offer. Lower corporate taxes, for one thing. I just got back from Ireland last night. They're apoplectic. Their corporate uh, tax rate is 12 percent. We're 35. Yeah. But Trump <laughs> wants to make it 15. I mean, they're looking at a lot of jobs leaving Ireland. Yeah, so. no more inversions, right? I mean, there, there would be no need to do these inversion deals. Right. Uh, so, uh, you know, we've heard corporate America also so far sound pragmatic and make nice. And, uh, you know, obviously uh, Apple is one of these key companies, though, because of their extraordinary success and what they mean as a world company. Mm -hmm. uh, what about Carrier? Uh, apparently, there's a lot of hope that maybe Carrier now will change their mind and Ford will change its mind. Although, if Ford doesn't make those small cars in Mexico uh, where they're making the fit and a whole bunch of others, how would they compete? 
Well, it's, it's not always about price. You know, obviously quality, again, some of the other factors I mentioned. But let's just say the prices were a little higher, Charles, because uh, you had to pay higher wages to labor. But remember, the guy who gave auto workers a raise was Henry Ford. He said, what good does it do me to have cheap labor if my p workers can't afford right. my own cars? Right. So let's just say it is more expensive, but the jobs create income, create federal revenue. You get what uh, Keynes called animal spirits. You know, you could get a lot of... Uh, ancillary effects. These are the kind of things that economists aren't very good at. They're second order effects. I think we're already seeing those animal spirits. I have yeah. a brother in law in the scrap metal business. Already in the first three days of the Trump presidency, he says there's been more activity than in the last few years. Jim, you're one of the best. I'm glad you could come by.